everyone. We are here at GitHub Universe. I'm with the one and only David. You know David from CS50. David, how has your experience been and how's it going? Good. It's been so nice to be back in person here at GitHub Universe. See a lot of our friends that we've only seen on Zoom for so many months now. So I'm having a good time. I, I love your energy. You know, I've been I've been watching CS50 like for like ever since I was in my freshman year. And when someone asked me how do we get started computer science, you know, so many fields to explore. And it's always good to know something about everything. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, check out CS50, you'll get a nice little idea. So before we even get started, I want to give a huge shout out to you. Thank you. And thanks a lot for creating the nice boot camps, educating people, and also for doing this interview. Yes, really of course. It. Happy to chat. And uh, yeah, so we're going to talk a little bit about education. So yeah. uh, let's dive straight into it. My question to you is, what are some of the challenges that you see students face when they're starting to get into the field of computer science? Yeah, I think this is true for so many students, both on campus and off. I think for many students, it's the syntax of languages that tend to get in the way because there's parentheses and curly braces and semicolons and a lot of distractions that really aren't even intellectually that interesting. The computer, depending on the language, needs those features, but the human doesn't necessarily need to wrap their minds ideally around them. And so this is actually one of the reasons why in CS50, we start with Scratch, which is this graphical programming language that gets rid of those syntactic features. But I think we very do quickly get into the weeds, in our case C, followed by Python and other languages that are more traditional. But even then, I think it just takes students time and practice to start to see through those distractions and just develop an instinct for and a muscle memory for detecting patterns in their code. And I think maybe the best reassurance I can offer for students who are currently struggling with code is it honestly just takes time and it takes practice and it shouldn't come. It doesn't come. It didn't come for me naturally all like this. It yeah. takes time. Yeah, great, great things don't come easy and things that come easy are not great. Very well yeah. said. All right. Uh, so I'm going to ask you a lot of questions that are around like the questions that I get. Okay. Uh, so... Another point with, 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 with what you just mentioned around programming languages, does it really matter which programming language you start with? No, not really. I think in general, when you're first learning to program, I think the quality of the materials that you find or the quality of the teacher, the instructor, the classmate who's helping teach you is probably far more important. I think when learning programming and software specifically, I think learning more than one language has its advantages and ideally different types of languages that offer different paradigms. So a procedural language like C, maybe a functional language as well, something that's object oriented to really round out your knowledge. I don't think it necessarily matters so much which one you learn first. I would choose the best opportunity available to you, but I would also round out your knowledge and not just chase what is most popular because I think indeed it's the principles, it's the features of the language that are important, not necessarily what is trending right now. Yeah, because things keep changing, but the fundamentals are, because as a developer, you never stop learning. And do you still like learn a lot of new things? I do. I mean, even over the years with CS50, has the course itself evolved, its syllabus curricularly, but also in languages. Early on, when I first started teaching CS50, we still used C, but then we used PHP toward the end of the semester for web programming, which, web programming, which was very much in vogue at the time. The reality is that Python and JavaScript now and others have rather accelerated in their popularity and therefore just utility. And so at some point we did decide, okay, it's time now to switch, particularly when with that language we found ourselves abstracting away certain trends uh, like routing and so forth, at which point it made sense to just use a framework, for instance, in another language. Um, but beyond that, I think it's it will continue to evolve, certainly. And what we're teaching now is certainly not what we're going to teach in another five, ten plus years. Yeah. No, I, I totally agree with that. And my next question to you is: so this is one, this is one that I get that I get quite a lot. There's so many things to do, mm -hmm. so many fields like there's web dev, AI, machine learning, mobile development, DevOps, and now the blockchain thing is coming up. So the questions that people ask is like: how do we figure out where we belong? Yeah. And how do we, there's so much to do? How do we explore and, and yeah. branch out? And you know, when the time is so limited in university. Absolutely. And for folks who aren't even in university too, you have now online as a potential resource. I think starting with some initial structure, it tends to be a good thing, whether that's in person or maybe finding some online course free or otherwise that provides you with enough structure to guide you through material. So you're not just struggling with or wrestling with materials on your own. Thereafter, I would try different things, different projects. And I think hands down the best way to acclimate to or delight in or get frustrated by some new technology is to find some personal project where you just have to solve the problems. And it's so much more interesting, but it's so much more challenging than, for instance, just working in a homework assignment that someone like me wrote for you, prescribed for you. I think back to years ago when I was first learning computer science in university, one of the first things I did with a, a roommate of mine was we figured out how to run our own Linux server. And we didn't have to do this. We were creating a huge amount of work for ourselves rather than just use some off-the-shelf tool at the time. 
but it was a great learning experience. And the novelty eventually wore off and we moved on to something else, but I would just try different things, but try to find projects that are personal interest to you, be it hardware wise or software wise. So that's like applying whatever you're learning. Yeah, absolutely. So that's why by making projects are like, Contribute to open source, or just just building things. Yeah, just applying stuff. I, because I think too many students, without perhaps a sufficient structure, find themselves just in this loop, this cycle of just yeah. doing tutorial after tutorial. tutorial. Yeah, indeed. And I think that is, it's fine if you're getting something out of it, but it's hard to break out of it. And I think the way you break out of it, ideally, is go tackle some project that you have no idea how to do, and then start asking lots of questions, do lots of Googling, figure out how you would solve it. And at that point, you really start to stand on your own. And so then you're much less intimidated in general when you say yes to the next project that you have no idea how to do. Yeah. And my one more question to you is, as, as an educator, does he like, uh, in CS50, there's like a room full of students, mm -hmm. and you like every year, every every semester, or something like that. So, how do you make sure like you're having the same enthusiasm when you're teaching the same thing again and again and again? Yeah, I mean the course does evolve over time, and the students are certainly changing, and there's invariably questions that are asked that maybe weren't asked before that keeps things interesting, and the technology is changing. I mean CS50 is underlying infrastructure that we've used, whether it's open source or building on top of commercial products, for instance, is itself constantly evolving. So just trying to make the experience different and better for students has been all the more engaging, I think, for us on the staff. And I think, too, the fact that everything is freely available online, edX and YouTube and the like, it just means that there's so many more students to reach, so many more corners of the world. And so trying to build up support for those communities, be it human, be it language, be it translation, there's just so much work to be done. So it's kept things certainly very challenging and interesting for years. Amazing. Well, thanks a lot for sharing, yeah, David. And, thanks for uh, having me. Just my one last question to you is, anything that comes to your mind off, off the top of your head, career advice for any student who is just starting out in tech, has no idea how to write a single line of code, but wants to get a job in tech, how do you start? Don't rush things. I don't think the best mindset is that you want to find the one best course to take and then get a job because you're not going to be sufficiently confident yet. You're not going to feel yourself as qualified as you will by just taking some time. And certainly, if you need to find employment, by all means, seek out opportunities that are within your reach, within your comfort zone. But I would keep in mind to my earliest of points, which is that this kind of thing just takes time and practice, not unlike physically with sports and whatnot, like it takes time and practice and application thereof. So just just don't get frustrated and sort of embrace it and be uncomfortable, be rather, be comfortable being uncomfortable um, because it'll all pay off in the end. Amazing. Well, thanks a lot for sharing. Yeah, thanks, thanks again. Your time and have a great rest of your day. Thank you. You too.